What's happening everybody? Josh here from Spawn Flyfish and today we are going to do a similar pattern that we've done before but with a little twist. We got our Spawn Polywog tails. They've hit the market. These things are epic. If you haven't used them, we highly recommend it. So we are going to be tying up the Coho Kool-Aid pattern today with a Spawn Polywog tail. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a pattern that has caught countless Coho and we look forward to tying this with you. Alrighty, let's get after this Coho Kool-Aid 2.0. So, in the vise, we got the Arex HR482 in a size 6. This HR482 has been my go-to for Coho in the rivers here on these articulated flies. It does a fantastic job. So we're going to wrap our threads back, our thread back here and get this going. All right, so we've taken our spawn polywog tail. We're going to trim a little bit of this side off. If you're tying really small patterns with it, you can get two tails out of one tail, but uh, we're just going to use one side. It doesn't really matter one, what side you use on these. We're just going to tie that directly onto the bottom, like so. so that's going to give it a little kick and just wiggle around and these coho are just not gonna say no i've caught enough of them to know that by the time they roll around here in the rivers this is just gonna be phenomenal for them so and if you think of washington fisheries like um when you're cycling your tying sessions I would I would start tying for these coho right now. Like you should you should be getting that coho box ready. You know, there's different different time periods where you're tying. Your chum fry season's long behind us. You have your coho going on. You have some shrimp like flies that you're going to use for rockfish. Uh, most of your bass flies should already be tied, and your carp flies should be tied. So now is kind of that time uh, when you start to think about. Uh, you got your ocean box ready. You got your Puget Sound box ready for the rest of the summer. All right, what's what's going to be in the fall, and what should I start preparing for when when there's days that you can't fish? And coho is a good one right now. I mean, we're we're several months away, so it gives you plenty of time to tie a few here, tie a few there, with no pressure of getting them done. So get that coho box ready, because before you know it, they'll be moving upstream and into the rivers and you this is a huge coho return year you're going to want to be ready so as as you can see we're just clumping dumping this spawn semi seal coho kool-aid up the shank of this hook that's all it is for this first section on the and that's going to kick on that articulate point of the jig shank so as you can see i haven't even turned it looking that it's even but as you're doing this make sure that you're getting even distribution the more you do it, the easier it'll come and you won't even look like I wasn't there. But want to make sure that you are mindful of that, getting that di distribution of these fibers uh, in the semi-seal. We're going to sneak a little bit more in there. So if you remember back, and I still would tie the Coho I would I would bring both. That Coho Kool-Aid has that bling rabbit strip instead of the polywog tail right there. And those bling rabbit strips are still awesome. I really like those, uh, specifically in that one color, to be completely fair. Uh, that one color of purple and pink is is really the one that I use, uh, and it's great. Like this product, I think the durability will surprise you. Both are extremely durable, and this is going to catch mini coho without issue. Alrighty, Maybe rock and roll there. We're gonna brush it out just a little bit. It'll slick down as it gets wet. But there, that is the foundation or tail foundation of this fly. So we're gonna pop that out. Add head cement. Forgot to bring head cement over to the table, but add some head cement to that. 
So then what we're going to do, take our 60 degree jig shank. We already have our fluorescent hot pink football bead on it. This is a pattern also that really good utilization of the spawn super beads. You want to plummet these uh, flies into the hole for these coho. And so we do want some decent weight on the front end of this. All right, so we're going to wrap some lead free wire 0 0.035. We're going to get a couple wraps of that as in here, as you can see, pinch that off and slide that bead forward. And then we're going to tie the arm down of the jig shank and then secure our wraps along that lead rewire. And that's not going anywhere. A lot of messy wraps there, but it'll get the job done. Let's curl that wire over there so we don't break our thread on camera. And we are ready to rock and roll. If you have a rubber band or something, that's a good time to use it. This has a little bit of a hook there that we can secure that. And we are back to the semi-seal. We use a ton of this on the vast majority of the flies that we use. If you haven't used it, highly recommend it. And we have so many of these blends that are catered to our fisheries, uh, but have wide ranging implications across many, many different fisheries. First wrap back. Secure that back around the connection point of that shank. Now we'll work our way up. And there's only a few more materials left in here. This is where you can get creative. Um, if you want to add rubber legs, you can add rubber legs. We're going to add two colors of uh, Maribu. Uh, originally, I usually just use one, but we're going to throw two in there today. And this is the time that you really want to make sure you don't. One, one common mistake when we, what we see with people is using too much semi seal or too much dubbing in general. You don't need a lot of this stuff. It's gonna have. It's gonna hold his profile. Alrighty, this is looking good. That football bead secure. That fluorescent pink hot spot is looking great. And now we are going to take a purple marabou feather first. We got right here. Got one with some nice long fibers, which we want. And we are going to wrap that sucker. Don't let that quill turn on us. Any of these fibers that get trapped, we can brush out, but try not to let them get trapped. You can, if you've seen Pete tie, you can moisten your fingers and kind of guide those feathers back or those fibers back at the beginning. As many of you have seen me tie, I'm a little bit sloppy, a little bit fast. Which really doesn't make any sense because I'm very detail oriented on many other aspects of my life. But a lot of time we are time constrained in the shop. It's the biggest thing that we're working against is time. And the faster I can tie this, the faster I can get on the water. 
and you're gonna fish these in structure, so you you are gonna lose some of these, even with, I mean, maximum 15 pound or maximum 20 pound that I would recommend, ultra green, uh, you're still gonna lose some of these. So be mindful of that. In saying that, it's, it's a nice, easy fly to tie. As you can see, that tail starting to come to life. This pattern starting to come to life. It's going to look really good in the water and hanging out of the fish's jaws here in several months. And I, I don't really fish these colorways too often in the salt. This is primarily a river oriented colorway. I have used this colorway in Puget Sound uh, with a lot of success for resident coho, but I don't use this out in the ocean uh, too much or out yeah, or out and off the jetty. Most of those would be, uh, if I'm going pink, it'll be pink and white or pink and silver or it'll be purple and silver. I like something a little more flashy. Hook is sharp. Alrighty, and we're just gonna contrast this with a hot pink marabou. Get some more wraps here. A lot of twitch and jigs look like this. And they do really, really work. So that'll do it here. We're getting right behind the bead. That's a lot of feathers. Don't let that intimidate you. You want something big for these fish to grab onto. It's not going to deter them. And it's not going to be crazy hard to cast. Alrighty, we'll brush that feather out. Get any of those trapped fibers to loosen up and that's going to create a really cool color there as you can see we didn't add a ton of the pink just enough to get it going there and that tail is going to stick out just a bit past this and be ready to rock and roll so the last thing that we do on that coho coolie pattern is give it a little bit of a collar we're going to do that again here just dub your thread a little bit Doesn't need to be a lot. This is just gonna cover up some of that thread. And whip finish, and then you are ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to fish these for coho. We've been fishing them for about every other species locally that we can. And they've got to travel a lot of places already and be fished, but we are excited here for this upcoming coho return and if you fish coho and you're looking at this thing come to life there is zero question in your mind whether or not this thing is going to get the job done that stinger style hook that polywog tail that spawn semi seal that spawn football bead everything you need to ensure success out here for these coho as they move into the rivers. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as I said earlier, tie some of these, the 2.0, as well as the original coho Kool-Aid, and you will be ready for coho success. Thank you very much.